Hey, if you liked the video, please hit that like button and uh, subscribe and look for some new ones in the future. Hey, it's Ted here. I'm in the uh, EFI lab and I've got a customer that's got a pair of C-Max marine engines. They're uh, a multi-port high output 5.7s and um, neither engine has spark and neither engine the fuel pumps run. It's been after COVID um, at least two years since this boat's been looked at and now I got in the middle of it. So um, what I found was the ECMs on the engine, they have failed. Um, so we're gonna see if we can hook them up and see if they make any contact. Um, if the fuel pumps run, if I can communicate with them. I couldn't communicate with either one. So I'll go over a little bit of how I did the testing um, to verify if the ECMs in case are bad. Um, have failed. Let me get uh, hooked up here. I'm going to get my scan tool hooked up and we'll see if we can communicate with either of these ECMs. One thing I want, wanted to go over real quick while I've got it here is the connectors on the ECMs are not interchangeable. Um, the connections themselves have plastic inserts and those plastic inserts are colored. This is for MEFI engines, so MEFI 1, 2, and 3. Um, and MEFI 4 as well. So let me just show you real quick which ones are which and how to identify which side if you're trying to figure out which connection is J1 or J2. So let's take a look. So you'll see I've got both connections on the ECM disconnected and one of the connections has a cap, plastic guide cap here that's clear and that guides it into the ECM where it will, it's keyed. So there's plastic keys here and this key plastic insert will snap onto this side or this side, but it will not fit inside the ECM. So if somebody switches them, then the wire can be put on the wrong side. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, if you look at the connection itself and if I can get around the corner you can actually see the label right there so you can actually see J2 so J2 the connector is a clear connector on it J1 obviously is the smoke connector so that's the first thing um, when you're identifying which ECM connector that you're dealing with especially when you get into the wiring diagram so now I'm going to hook up a scan tool, laptop, and we're going to plug in the other ECM and see if it functions or not. Okay, so the two ECMs in question are here, and they both have the same Delphi part number. I've researched that, and they both are MEFI 3 ECMs. The first one says Delphi 1623709, and the other one is also 1263709. So it is the correct version for that engine. Um, it's a multi-port engine and all MEFI 3 processors all have power on a couple of connections and I'm going to show you that next. Just to review again the uh, idea of the ECMs, this is a 4.3 V6 wiring diagram. Um, it's a MEFI 3. So the wake up is J232, fixed power is J21, the three grounds you need are J1, 5, 20, and 4. And then if I go over to, let's say, a 454, a 7.4 GI MEFI 3, same thing applies. J21 is constant power. J232 is the wake up. And then your three grounds. So that really is the only thing that I really need to know other than the data stream. So if we look at the data stream, and that would be my serial data. That's gonna be my communication wire. So in all MEFI 3, it doesn't matter if it's a multi-port or if it's a TBI engine, um, you still should be able to identify it with Diacom um, and see if it'll communicate. So let's try that. With its original processor in it, and you just gotta pick MEFI 1 through 4, um, select that, and if it can communicate with the ECM with a key on, you get this screen, and node 1, is just the standard which gives you all the data and then I can just pick the standard diagnostic data click OK and then if I communicate with the engine then I'll get live data so if I got live data here which I do I can see the ECM um, 
check some numbers, I can see all that, which tells me that yes, I am communicating with the ECM. So let's power this down and disconnect the battery and reconnect ECM, whatever this is. And it won't matter because it's a MEFI 3 ECM by the part number and um, it should communicate. So let's see what happens. All right, so I got the ECM plugged in here. I've reconnected the other ECM, reconnected the battery. I've got the key on and I can show you I've got that one disconnected and the other one on there. And then what I can do is I've got voltage and I can crank the engine, but I don't hear anything. No fuel pumps, just like the other engine. I don't hear anything from the CCM. So we're going to go and connect to the engine. Mephi 1 through 4 and click OK. Not good. Same thing as when it was in the boat. No communication. All right, I've switched over to the other ECM out of the other engine, and let's see if we can communicate here. And the answer is negative. So neither ECM communicates. Okay, so we verified that both of these ECMs are no good. One thing more I'm going to show you is a little trick just to see if there's any data stream coming out of it to see if it's awake at all, which I doubt, because if there was any information, the Diacom would communicate, but I'll show you that next. All right, so the next thing I want to do is go over how to check to see if the ECM is trying to communicate with a scan tool. So a little trick I use is a frequency meter. A frequency meter tells you a little more about if that's a variable signal that's changing, oscillating, um, and you can see this real quick. So let's look at the book first and I'll show you where I'm going. All right, so I've got a MEFI 3 ECM here and the J2 terminal and the J1 terminal. And the one I'm interested in is the serial data. So what's gonna happen is when the communication from the scan tool asks the ECM for data, so over here I have the diagnostic test terminal and it's plugged into my scan tool. And I have a back pin probe here going into that orange and black wire. The other wire from my meter is just connected to ground off the back of the alternator. So there's the no data is on that wire. So when I just turn the key on, the ECM wakes up and you'll see some data there, which is just the changing, but there's no request from a scan tool. So without you asking with a scan tool for data, the frequency right now is on Hertz, all right? It's about 170 to 176 Hertz. Um, the duty cycle on that circuit is about 94% of the time. So it's just about powered on that circuit, just about 100% of the time. So now what we'll do is I'm gonna go down here to the engine and I'm gonna pick my boat again. I'm gonna communicate with the engine to make sure I can. Click okay and it communicates. We'll go to mode one, click engine data. And now what I'm gonna do is get ready to connect to the engine. So, without connecting to the engine, it kind of bounces back between 170.9 to 160, 76.2, as you can see this. It's pretty consistent. Now, watch what happens when I click connect with a scan tool and I ask for data. Here we go. Ah, there it is. So, 120, 1.12 and now it's kilohertz, kilohertz so it's jumped up in its frequency here I'm gonna disconnect from the engine and watch what happens it freezes for a moment because you've taken that away and it just shuts off and it goes back to its testing of that circuit just looking for information on that circuit it's a stationary frequency with a pretty high voltage if we go to duty cycle you can see it's about 90 89 94 percent if I connect to the engine again, then let's see what happens to the duty cycle of that circuit. And here we go, 45%. So that tells you there's data on that line right now. That's where the duty cycle and the frequency really helps to diagnose if an ECM is trying to communicate or not. So I'll disconnect it again, give it a moment, it freezes, and it should go back 
to about a 94%, okay? So that's a normal operating ECM, okay? Let's see what we get on a blown up ECM. So hang on. All right, I have swapped out the ECM and let's turn the key on and see what happens. So the key is on and there is nothing. I can crank the engine and there's nothing on that connection. Now let's see if I ask for information, I'll go back here and I'm going to try to communicate even though I've already been plugged in. And there we go. You got 99%, right? Because I tried to communicate. So you can see again, if I try again. So frequency, let's see what happens when I do the same thing. So I'm gonna pick the boat and I'm gonna to try to get it to communicate. There it is. It's only 7.6 hertz is coming out of that circuit. And it still can't communicate. So there's a there's a failure in this ECM. It does not like it when you try to hook, hook a scan tool up to it. And it's definitely a it's definitely a MEFI 3 ECM by the part number. So this one is no good. So let's look at the other one. Okay, here's the second ECM. Okay, so the key's on with nothing again. And I'm gonna go back to Diacom and Click the boat and I'm going to try to connect to the engine. So here we go again. Let's see if it does the same exact thing. Yep, 7.6. Same exact reaction to it and it will not communicate with the ECM. All right, so we know that there's something seriously wrong with this with both ECMs. So any EFI engine that you're working on, if you're trying to diagnose a bad ECM or something, use your ears, use your eyes. So the first thing you want to do is listen. Just listen and see if you hear beep and then the fuel pumps. Ready? One, two, three. Beep. And the fuel pumps. That tells me the ECM's communicating. It's talking and it's testing things. So we have two bad ECMs. More than likely what maybe happened here was this boat got struck by lightning so or near it 